second half of the NFL season is here, and those young QBs are putting on a show. But who's the best team? This is when we separate the pretenders from the contenders. And you can follow that story every Sunday with the NFL on CBS. Welcome back, man. Season two of All the Smoke. We got a real special guest. What's up with your Brody with the virtual handshake? I'm going to tell y'all something that I never told nobody. I want All the Smoke. Welcome back to another edition of All the Smoke. Jack, what's up with you, bro? My boy, what's happening? Man, I can't call it. Just got out the gym, a little boxing, low little weights. Yeah, smokes. you boxing now. What's going on? I'm back. Yeah, just in case. You know what I mean? It's a new world. Just in case. You know, you, know, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you, know you never know. Smoke one on the way home and then came right home. And now we got, uh, man, the homie. I remember working out with this dude when he first came into the league. We were working over at uh, C. Far over at Loyola. And just to see his steady improvement from the time he stepped into the league to where he is now has been Man, it's been amazing to watch, and uh, someone I can call a friend. Welcome to the show, Demar Derozan. What's up, bro? Yes, sir. What's, man, what's up, bro? What's going on? What's up, dog? Man, I appreciate y'all for having me, man. Yeah, definitely an come. honor. You know what I mean? Long, Real life. Long overdue. Long overdue, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. for sure. Com- for Compton's sure. Dog. in the building. Compton's in the building. Compton's yeah. in the building. Eight. Eight. Demar, remember that one? Oh man, what was it? Maybe it was like ten years ago. Remember that flag football game you had me come play? Yes. It was Compton. Who, yes. who did we play against? It was it was Brandon Jennings and his crew, right? Yeah. It was random. Yeah, it was random, bro. Yo, we played like it was like was a Gardena dope. or something. Yeah. Yeah, we went at it, was, it though. Yeah, that was dope. That's where all that football stuff started coming from. Cause you start doing your shit after yep, that. Yep, then I yeah, then cause I did a golf like, tournament at first. And yeah, then after I yeah. played in that football game, I told Snoop, I'm like, bro, let's do a flag football tournament because I was fucking with DeMar and we yeah. played this game. It was Cops. Where's Brandon from? Gardena. Okay, yeah, so it was Compton yeah, versus yeah. Gardena. We had Compton jerseys yeah. and everything. That shit was hard, though. Yeah. We was out there, like, really playing football. Yeah, that shit was fun. That shit was fun. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. man, how are you and the family doing? Uh, difficult, different times. Uh, you know, obviously, with the current, current climate, you were in the bubble for a little bit. How's mm-hmm. the family holding it down? Man, everybody holding it down. I mean, best as, as they can. You know, it's been, like you said, it's been definitely a tricky time. You know, um be there um, with your family as best you can, protect them, enjoy the moments. It's been a crazy triumph time that we just been trying to push through, man. Just try to make the best out of it every single day. Um, stay busy, stay moving, keep your mind occupied because it's it's easy to fall into that 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 that, that darkness and, and and just be down every day. So um, mm-hmm. just try to keep everybody up the best 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 I can. That's what's up. You uh, you got a chance to uh, experience the bubble. Um, although you guys didn't make the playoffs, you guys were there and got to play your final uh, handful of games. What was that like? Um, the bubble was whatever you made it to be. You know, for me, I I, I treated it like I was I was going to Bahamas or some sitting on an island for, for a couple of weeks. It, <laughs> Straight up. It really up. it really was whatever you made it to be. You know what I mean? And and for me, I just took I just took it for what it was worth. You know, I try to, you know, um do a lot of reading. Try to do a lot of different shit that that, that kind of keep your mind going because it's easy to get caught up in just sitting in the room. If you're not playing or you're not in the gym, you know, it, it, and not, you know, all you're gonna do is think about, you know, missing your family, missing all the cool whatever whatever you could be doing back home. So for me, you know, I was I was out there in, in the Bahamas for for, for about eight weeks. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> I can't beat that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, uh, but uh, um, but in total, in whole, like, how how would you rate the experience? One question and two: Did you watch the playoffs once you left the bubble? Um, I rate it for for honestly, it kept us beyond safe. You know, um, we didn't have not. Not one case, you know, um, for us to go out there and play how we play um, every other day. You know, it worked out perfect. Um, it sucks not being able to play in front of your your family or fans as it is. It, it definitely was different. It, it definitely was was different. But just me being a hooper, all I cared about having a, was having the opportunity to hoop. Um, and once I left, I for sure watched every single game. I watched every single playoff game. Um just to see how guys perform, you know, I'm coming, being in a bubble and leaving out the bubble just to have two different perspectives to know what it's like to be in there and see a lot of those guys perform the way they did. It's tough, man. It's tough. You know, a lot of, a lot of us 
kind of feed up, feed off the crowd and that energy and the, the right. build up and have your own energy when the playoffs came. That was that mm. was one thing that I was interested in seeing. And a lot of guys showed that. You it, it still seemed like, you know, you look at Dame, it looked like Dame was playing in front of 20,000 fucking people. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah, I mean? Like straight up. And it, 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 it's, it, it's hard to do it when you out there. They don't show it on TV, but the other side of that camera is just a blank, black fucking wall. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, you won't see nothing but people's eyes because you got the, the reporter sitting over there with their mask on and they on a the computer. It's just, it's just an awkward feeling. So you got to definitely generate your own, your own different mentality to go out there and hoop. Right. Yeah. So- so you're born and raised um, in Compton. Compton is probably one of the most famous neighborhoods in the world between music, between movies, mm-hmm. between the athletes, between violence. Tell us what it was like growing up there. I mean, I, w- I wish I could tell a, a unique <laughs> story, but like for me, it was so normal until I, I was able to get to the to the lead to be able to see you know, the other side of the fence to compare the way I grew up, you know, um, it's just a, a natural instinct growing up in Compton to understand, you know, where to go, where not to go, what time to go somewhere, how to maneuver, you know, it's just a, a, a natural survival instincts that you kind of grow up with. And all you cared about was whatever you cared about. For me, it was hooping, you know what I mean? It was always hooping, hanging out with, 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 with my partners, with my, with my family. And with that came, understanding how to move and be safe. You know, before I walked out the house, my mama said, I don't care what you do as long as you walk your ass back in this house safe and sound, you know, and, and that was life for 18, 19 years, you know, um, until I, I made it out and you start to realize like, God damn, this, mm-hmm. I had to grow through this shit, you know, and yeah, um, mm-hmm. you, start to, you start to realize the guys that's in that position that don't know, you try to go back there and give them a different type of motivation and understanding mm-hmm. that, like this is not life, you know. It's so much more to life that's that 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 could bring you a whole different type of mindset to want to be successful, be somebody, be something, you know. Um, be the one to make the change for your family because, you know, um, growing up in Compton, you don't know. You really don't know. Right. Mm. You, on, you only know what you see. Yeah, you only know what you see. When did when did basketball become a part of your life? How how how, how at, at what age? Um, my dad always put me in sports early on. Like I played T ball, um, try to do everything, you know, um always try to mimic everything I I I seen, you know. I wanted wanted to do boxing. So we used to slap box in, in, in the streets. Um you wanted mm-hmm. to do whatever you seen um in our culture, that's what you kinda lean lean on. Um and for me, basketball probably stuck. When I was probably like seven, eight years old, it was just one of those things to where, you know, I, um, my imagination took over for all the things I seen growing up, you know, watching all, if it's Jordan, Kobe, all these players, and you going back home, reenacting moves, pouring water on top of your head, acting like you sweating, acting like you're doing a move. And, you know, that became my imagination day in and day out to where I, I wanted to do it on the court. And it just stuck with me, stuck with me. And before you know it, you know, I started getting taller. I started getting better. I started doing different things. And, you know, I just I just ran off with it from there, about six, seven years old. Mm-hmm. Um, Kobe, uh, you know, obviously rest in peace. Being someone mm-hmm. who's from L.A. and grew up, you know, as a youngster, when Kobe first got in the league, how important he was to you. I read somewhere that you uh, you said you cried when he shot those air balls in Utah because you were yeah. when you're seven, seven or eight years old. Like that's yeah. how in tune you were with him. So this is kind of a two-part question. How important was he to you as a person, as someone you modeled your game after and looked up to? And then how important is he to the to the culture and to the energy of LA? Um, for me, it, Cole was, was my imagination. That was a player, you know, obviously as I got older and able to look at Michael Jordan. He became one of my favorite players. But growing up, when I started to understand and comprehend basketball at at at, at a young age, it was from Kobe. Being a Lakers fan, we didn't have cable. All we had was channel KCAL 9 when, when the mm-hmm. Lakers came on channel 9. That was the only fucking channel we had. So I watched every Laker game growing up. And Cole was the one that I gravitated to. And for me to see the start 
the fails. Um, I remember begging my dad, um, could we go get a newspaper? Um, just so I could see what he said after the game, you know, comments after the game, little shit like that gave me an a emotional connection to, to one of my favorite players that made me want to push harder when, when, when it came to want to play sports, especially basketball, you know, um, seeing how he got better, the things he went through. Um, so the culture of LA for me, from me being 31 now, is 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 based around you know being man like the energy always Straight being up. Kobe you know mm-hmm. obviously you know always heard always heard the stories like my dad and you know my uncles always talk about you know the Showtime Lakers that's kind of like their generation but for people my age like you can't think about the Lakers without thinking about Kobe mm-hmm. you know that's you it. can't think about that you know what I mean and it's just and it's just that like. Period. When you think about that yellow and gold, you think about Bean. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and, Definitely. And, and it's crazy. That was, that was That's one how thing it is I, in my mind. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was one, yeah. one thing I talked about. You know, I came here in 98 straight out of high school and never really left. And I told people that, like, the world lost a superstar, but L.A. lost a yeah. superhero. Like, he yeah. was everything to L.A., you know, and I talked about mm-hmm. my experience but like I said his first time in the league was right when I was at UCLA so we were crossing paths and like like you said be able to, being able to see his growth like right next to you was dope you know what I mean so he was so much mm-hmm. more than just a basketball player his energy his his everything was you know the essence of LA and it's uh, it's sad man that, that we lost him and Jeej and obviously everyone else on that uh, plane that day but uh, you know rest in peace to our brother man without a doubt yes sir a uh, very decorated high school player at Compton High. I mean, you had all the accolades, uh, McDonald's All-American, Jordan Brand, Parade All-American, you name it, you did it. What was your recruiting process like? You ended up down, you know, down the city at SC, but did, did UCLA ever cross your mind? And where, where else were you uh, serious, uh, considering about going to college at? Um, I took a couple unof- uh, unofficial visits. I went to Florida State, um, checked out Florida State. Florida State scared the shit out of me because that's when they started having hurricanes. That's when the whole, whole hurricane <laughs> thing was going on. And me being from LA, like, yeah, I wasn't used. I wasn't used to that. Um, and it was too far from. It was too far from home. Like, I, I, I never left home. You know what I mean? Like, I, I visited North Carolina. You know, it was a prestige school that, you know, it was it was definitely intimidating when I went. When I went and was like, damn, this is a big school. That's why I want to be a part of. But too, too far away from school. Um, checked out Cal. Cal was closer, but I just didn't get a vibe from Cal. Like, you know, I, I fit in. UCLA was was one, but it was too bougie for me. I ain't gonna lie, man. I'll keep it. It was, it was like, it was bougie as shit when yeah. I went. And it was just like, nah. And when I went to S- <laughs> <laughs> when I went- when I was at SC, it was more so, it was like a raw feeling because, you know, SC never really had like that, you know, star power really come out there like, you know, UCLA had, you know. Um, and it's in the middle of the hood. Straight and it's up. in the middle of the hood. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That, boy felt, you, you know that, what boy felt, that boy felt right at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, feel, you, feel, you feel comfortable. So when I went, you know, I always try to follow the motto of like, man, I don't want to go nowhere where everybody, a bunch of other people did all this stuff at, you know, I want to go somewhere and kind of, you know, be a reason why other people come here, you know? And right. like once, once I got that feel of understanding, like, damn, it ain't really been nobody come out of here. Let me try to put my stamp on it and, and leave out of here saying I did some or I helped motivate it these other kids from LA don't want to come to USC because you look back at it, everybody was going to UCLA. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like all the guys I grew up watching is Matt, BD. Like I go down the line is guys that went to UCLA and it's like, man, let me be one of those guys when later on in my career, I want a, I want a young cat to come to me and be like, man, I went to SC because you, you know what I mean? No. Like, right. Yeah. And that, that was kind of one of the things I did, you know what I mean? And it's crazy. Even with Nick, even with Nick, I tell this crazy ass all the time, you know, he was part of the reason why I went too. Cause you know, I, I remember visiting SC and he was in there working out killing. I'm like, I could, I know he from up the street. So it's like, damn, he went here. All right, cool. I'm, I'm going to come here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever he did, but better. So, how I'm looking at him, somebody could come here and look at me and do the same thing. You know, that was Straight my up. mindset. And, and 
that's what led me to, you know, want to stay home and go to SC. Shout out Swaggy P. Swaggy, Swaggy P. P. <laughs> hey, um, this this past February, you had your jersey retired at SC. Yeah, yeah. Talk about that. Man, it was it was it was crazy, man. It was it was it was one of those things to where I know it was mentioned it was mentioned to me, and I was just like, man, hell no, you know, I. I I wasn't even thinking about it, you know, at, at, at that time, it was so much crazy stuff going on in the beginning of the year. Um, so the school will call and, you know, say we want to surprise you and, and honor you, honor you with retiring your jersey. You know, it was it was beyond an honor, you know, and it was it was something that, you know, I, I couldn't believe to come back home all star weekend, have family and friends there to see my jersey go up, go up there after, you know, doing a year. Um, of school, you know, that goes back to my point of like, damn, I'm glad I, I took this route. It was a hard, it was right. a hard route, you know, but this is why you do it years yeah. later to come back and be able to see a jersey get lifted up in front of your family, friends and, and, and be embedded for life. Yeah. Was that, was that, was that your best memory as, uh, as a Trojan? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, when it, when in a Pac-10 tournament, um, the first time in school history, that that was probably I gotta was definitely that, put that number was, one. Was that was that your freshman year? Yeah, that was my. You were my, my you were you, you you were MVP of the pack, weren't you? MVP of the yeah. tournament too. Yeah, yes, I was sir. MVP. They counted us out. I remember going into the tournament. They for us to get to the NCAA tournament, we had to win out to just get a spot for the big tournament. So I just remember that whole that that the game the night before. I remember just telling guys like. Fuck it, we about to go all out, man. Like, I don't plan on coming back to school, so we got to get in this tournament. <laughs> let's, let's we got to get, get in this shit. tournament. We got to get it and to do that and get MVP of it, man. It was, it was, it was, it was some, some that that I still remember to this day, man. That was kind of like the first taste of the pros for us, though. You know what I mean? To go go play at the Stable Center, like yeah. where the Lakers play at in college. Man, Motherfuckers yeah. out there scalping tickets, yeah. selling tickets. Yep. Like, it was a real yep. vibe. And I remember that I remember shit when pull, they finally I remember moved pulling it. Up, yeah, I remember pulling up in a bus, and it was like, damn, this is what it's like. This Hell is what it's yeah. like. yeah, that shit uh, was, was live as league. fuck. First it time. Crazy. It was crazy. Straight yeah. up. So, ninth overall pick to Toronto. A kid from Compton that got to stay home and go to USC. And then you drafted to go play in Canada. What was your first thought? <laughs> you know, it was crazy. I didn't have a passport, right? <laughs> I didn't even have a passport. And I remember when I got drafted, like, I was fucking terrified because nobody in my family had a passport. Like, you know, a couple <laughs> people couldn't even you. get a passport. Like, you feel me? Like, <laughs> so I remember going, I remember going and, and like, it seemed like I was going to a different world. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was completely different from anything that I ever could expect. Then trying to prepare myself for winners, I had no clue about no winner. I man, still was wearing low top. Tell them, man. Look, like, look, we come from California. Still, we don't have like coats. We don't because we wear sweatshirts yeah. year round. We don't have jackets. We didn't. I didn't have none of that, bro. I'm still wearing low top chucks in the middle <laughs> of December. Hell, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like you know, <laughs> right. it, it was. It was definitely an adjustment and you know, I didn't have nobody with me. I was by myself my like my first year. Like it was just mm. me. You know what I mean? So it was definitely an adjustment, but it was it was beneficial for me because that it made me want to learn more on the court and and, and stay in the gym, you know. Um mm. and, and I didn't have no distractions. That was my only choice. I, bro, I didn't even know where to go eat. I'm still I was still eating like gyros on the corner, fucking from the meat stand. <laughs> like I'm still going down there getting little gyros, eating street meat and all that shit. Go back to the hotel room and wouldn't leave out until I gotta go to the gym, man. Like that's yeah. my whole year was that. You know what I mean? Culture shock, man. That was a loaded yeah. draft too. That was uh Blake Griffin went one, James Harden went yep. three, Steph went seven, yep. you went nine. So that was yep. a that was that was a nice draft. Yeah, yep. You, what was your most memorable night about draft? Uh, you know, excuse me. What was your most memorable story about draft night? Um, that my phone bill was due and I didn't have no money to pay it the next day. <laughs> yeah. Wow, right? that's crazy as hell. Uh, Imagine that. a phone bill. Like people think you rich already, got money and all yeah. that shit, right? I remember my phone was going off, and I'm like, God damn, my 
My bill gonna be fucking crazy. How I'm gonna pay this shit tomorrow? <laughs> and I remember <laughs> stressing because anybody was texting me that whole night, and I, I'm sitting up there laughing like I'm about to get drafted, and I'm fucking worried about my phone <laughs> bill being paid tomorrow. <laughs> but for the most part, just 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 sitting there at the table with my mom, you know, um, knowing everything she been through. She mm. she my she my heart, my strength. You know, I seen her go through so much stuff. My dad, you know, just just to have them two there to, to to see that moment meant everything for me because you know I I I remember them long nights of them trying to figure out how we're gonna keep the lights on, how they gonna mm-hmm. feed me this that you know so much shit that 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 went on throughout my childhood that I just wanted to pay them back and to see them so happy more than I ever seen before in my life you know it made it made the sacrifice all worth it. That's what's up. What was your welcome to the NBA moment? <laughs> shit, I had a lot of those, man. <laughs> um, shit, man. Um, I remember, I remember playing against Brandon Roy. Oh, and yo, people this, don't know how nice Brandon Roy was. Listen, Whew, listen. I tell everybody that stuff. Like my my. It was Brandon Roy, bro. Like, and the way he did it was so effortless. Like, I didn't even Smooth. exist on the court. Like, it was the most disrespectful shit I ever like encountered. <laughs> that, that for for years it made me so upset that he did me like that. But that was him, you know what I mean? And it, and, and and I I always wonder, like, man. People don't know how Brandon Roy really was, mm. man. He mm. he was a problem. Mm. He was a problem. You know what I mean? And and he welcomed me to the league. You know, um, for real. Like that was a tough one, but for the most part, it was like every single night for me was something new. Like, and it's crazy. As soon as I, I don't know if you remember this stat. I remember we was playing against when you was in Charlotte, right? Mm-hmm. I remember. Somebody got into it. I ain't gonna say who got who who said some, but you got into it with somebody and on my team, <clears throat> and they said <laughs> they said no, my bad, stack. And you said yeah, I know, motherfucker. And the motherfucker <laughs> turned around and didn't say nothing back, right? So I'm like, <laughs> what is this? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember you hit him. Look, stack. You hit him on the chest and said, I know. It's your fault. And the motherfucker <laughs> turned around. And I'm like. Oh, man. I'm like, no, so it, it, it's a, listen, it was it was a lot of moments like that was besides like the hooping. That was a welcome to the league for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I remember Shaq. I remember Shaq always telling somebody like, motherfucker, bet 200,000 you won't do this right. I'm like, like man. in the game, I'm like. Yes, bro. This this is going on, like you know what I mean. Like all Yo. those was a lot of like hey, I know I know I know you write about Shaq. I don't mean to cut y'all, but I got to tell this story about Shaq because Shaq was very disrespectful to them referees. Bro. Yeah, Shaq was talking so bad to the referee one time, Matt, and me and Jermaine O'Neal was like, "Y'all not gonna call a tech? Like somebody blow a whistle?" He looked at us right in front of the referee, and he told all of us this: "I have a half. I said I have five hundred million in the bank." What the fuck he gonna do to me? I said, huh? Ooh, yes. <laughs> this was during the game, Matt. <laughs> me and JL and he, just walked back to the free throw line and got ready to box yeah, out. Right. Nothing else you can do after that. He wasn't it's lying. <laughs> what can you say? Like, so, so those moments for me, like, was like my welcome to the league shit. What was like, yo, this, and I, like, to this day, I, I, I always tell guys, especially young guys now, like, Y'all don't know how it was. Like, I'm so appreciative to be able to play against y'all. You know what I mean? Because that gives a different type of push on on the passion of the game, how it used to be night in and night out. Like, like I remember Cole. I remember my rookie year. Cole was like, no, it was my, my second year in the league. Cole came up to me and told me, he said, I'm going to foul you every time down. I bet you they don't call the fucking foul. <laughs> I used to be like... You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yo, yeah. like he wasn't that's lying bad. You hey, feel he me? Was hack, like, hey, he was a hacking motherfucker, boy. Oh, oh, oh man, that motherfucker will—he will beat you man. the fuck up and not like 
You feel me? Mm. So it's like mm. my rookie year, I had so many of those moments. And to me, that, that was, was the craziest shit to me because you don't know what it was like. It's not like that now, but I'm glad no. I played against y'all era of that shit because that that was some gangster shit, man. It was a lot yeah, of gangster yeah. shit going on on the court. He said it was yeah. a lot of gangster shit. You know what's crazy, <laughs> though, is, 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 to hear, is to hear him talk about this. He came in in 10. You know, you finished 14. I finished 17. But to hear, like, yeah. our era, like, yeah, we can, oh, bro. Our era. That's crazy as man. fuck. Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. I That's love, crazy. I love it. Hey, we survived it, though. We survived it. No, we made it, it. out. Yeah. Hell yeah, A lot of motherfuckers didn't make it. A lot nah, of motherfuckers yeah. didn't make it, man. Yeah. Nah, where, yeah. where where are they now? They know where we at on every TV <laughs> in, in the motherfucking world. God damn it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you go into... Uh, man, you go into Toronto. Uh, you didn't play with Bosch at all, right? He left the year you came? No, nah, I Miami? played with my rookie year. My rookie okay, year, we played together. Then okay, he left so how, next year. How, how was it? We just had him on the show recently. How was it playing with Bosch? Man, it was it was amazing. You know, to to be able to know I'm te- I was teaming up with you know one of the dynamic players, all stars at that time. He being a rookie, obviously knowing and understanding his game, who he was, and and seeing his work ethic when I came in. I remember, um, I remember when I came in for training camp. Um, he didn't really do training camp because I think that. That summer they had did the Olympics or some or something's going on. Um, and I remember like wondering, like, damn, why he ain't doing training camp? Not knowing, you know, he's a veteran, he going through all that. But I always used to just watch his work ethic, the way he, even if he didn't practice, how he approached the weight room when he was in the gym working out. Once he got on the court, everything he did, how it translated over to the court and how he just used to go out there and dominate, go out there and get 40, 45. Next mm. thing you know, he on a he on a plane drinking something. And I'm like, damn, fuck you doing this? Do this shit the next <laughs> night. <laughs> next night. Next night. You know, don't practice. Go out and get 37. When it, you know what I mean? It was like, mm. yeah. Damn, I I ain't doing this. This motherfucker is nice. So a lot of a lot of a lot for me was always just watching. You know, um, um then once we got a little bit closer, you know, having a conversation, you know. He always used to give me little little small gems and I always used to just run with him, run with him from there, you know. And I never understood the the business that young, but when guys were telling me, like, yeah, you know, he's Chris is out of here. I'm like, what you mean? We still got 30 games left in the season. It's like, yeah, you know, he's probably leaving. I'm like, what you mean? You know what I mean? But it was one of those things where I thought I, I was gonna come up on the C B and, and learn from him. But that year, um, even with him not knowing, you know, I I you know, every time I see him, I tell him how much I appreciate him. Um, just helping me unknowingly by just watching his approach to the game, how he carried himself and everything he did. But for me, it was dope to be able to play with him this year. That's what's up. Yeah. Uh, two questions. Were you a Vince fan before you got to Toronto? Yeah. And did you feel, yeah. and did, and did you feel any pressure? You know, we're, we're walking in his footsteps. Because y'all some bust some <clears throat> dunking motherfuckers, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I know, right? <laughs> I, I definitely I definitely was a Vince fan, um, especially when early on, when the, I remember um, Toronto always used to, especially on the weekend, Toronto used to play them early as games, like 12, mm-hmm. 12, 30 Eastern time. Mm-hmm. So it used to be 9 o'clock, 9 30 LA time. So I used to get up and always watch, watch, um, Toronto games. Obviously, everybody wanted to see what Vince was doing, um, how he always used to explode. So I always used to watch Vince. Um, all those guys always was. I was Vince was probably in my top five growing up of, of players. You know that I always had to watch. That I, I just needed to watch. See how he got down. Always tried some shit he he was doing. Um, so when I went, you know, I, I never felt like I had to, you know model my game or it was going to be hard footsteps to follow because, you know, I just looked at it like that was one of my favorite players and I'm playing for the same team. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to go in here and do, 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 do whatever I can as myself. You know, I never try to go out there and do anything he could. Um, but it, 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 as time would buy to see me slowly start to like break so many events records, then I started looking at it like, damn, like I never thought I would have did this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. Um, it, just, it started later in my career. It started to look crazy, 
it f- feel crazy looking back on it, knowing that I grew up watching Vince now, like every other day he's saying, I just beat Vince record this, this. And every time I seen him, whenever I did something, he was the first one to acknowledge it. And, you know, it was, that that part for me was was, was definitely crazy. That's what's yeah, he like. a real big homie. He a, he a true yeah. version yeah. of a big homie. Yeah, no mm-hmm. question. No question. Yeah. Chris Bosh leaves. Uh, you guys go into rebuild mode. You go from yeah. a rookie to like it's your mm-hmm. time, pretty much your team. How long did it take you to feel like you kind of really got your footing in Toronto? Um, because I want to. I think that next year we was we was obviously terrible, but my my um the coach at the time was like, you know, go for broke when it shoot it. If you don't shoot, I'm taking you out. You know, who, was the, who, who was the coach at the time? Who was the coach Jay, at the time? Jay, Shoot the Jay. Jay, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jay Triano. Jay Triano. Okay. That was his last year in it. Okay. I just remember, like, you know, and now looking back on it, they wanted me to develop and just, you know, go out there and be myself. So I went out there and just played, played who. Um, so that year was just tough because it was so much on me. I was playing 44 minutes a game. It kind of oh, just love, beat man. me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it showed me what I needed to work on to try to survive a 82 schedule. Playing mm-hmm. against grown men, getting beat up every single night. What I what I where I need to get stronger at, how to really take care of myself, take care of my body and all that. So um it wasn't it wasn't to my fourth year, so I I really felt like, all right, I I, I got this down packed and I just took off running with it from there. You remember mm-hmm. you remember not wanting to come out the games. Then probably five, six years in, you looking for them TV timeouts or looking for a sub over there. The first couple of minutes Stat, you hate coming out of game. <laughs> look, Stat, bro, I know the TV commercials by heart. I know that when that six minute mark about to come, <laughs> I'm about to foul, so it'll be a dead ball, so it'll be a timeout. <laughs> like what? I'm telling you, man. That's the only rest you get. Yep, that's, that's the only yeah. rest you get, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yep. Well, how did the additions of Kyle Lowry and Dwayne Casey help you as a player and, and as a, as a leader of the team? So, Case came my third year. Um, I want to say that was the lockout year. I want to say that was the lockout year. So, Lock, lockout we came, year, yeah, yeah, my, yeah. The, yeah, I want to say that maybe it was lockout lockout year, yeah. but when he came, we jumped right into it so quick and. You know, it was a, it was it was such a new addition to where you know we trying to figure this thing out, but it was completely. It felt like another start over year for for me because we got a whole new staff, we got new players. Um, we trying to figure it out, um, but Case let me be me. To this day, I, 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 Dwayne Casey, I I wouldn't be the player I am today if it wasn't for him. You know, he put the ultimate trust in me and 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 trust in my work ethic and allow me to be me. He never forced me to do anything I didn't want to do. He never pressured me, none. He just completely let me be myself. You know, um, then when Cal, Cal came to the team, um, we ain't get along for the first year we played together. Um, I <laughs> like, I, I, I swear. Yeah, I wondered it was that. Like, I wondered that. Like, now y'all best friends. That's crazy. Man, bro. and that's that's my that's my dog. He know I'll fight 10 motherfuckers for him, for him right now. So <laughs> he, 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 he know it. But that first year, it was so it was so different because Cal's such a Philly. He's such a Philly dude. And he's Philly such bull. a pest. Yeah. And, you know, he 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 like. So me being I always been laid back and chill. So I always used to just to watch him like, man, what the fuck is who is he? Like <laughs> I never talked to him. We never had a conversation my first year together. That's crazy. And I don't wow. know two I, best like, players. I swear, yeah. I, just, I didn't have his number. We didn't go eat. We didn't sit by each other on a plane. We didn't <laughs> nothing. When I tell you nothing, only time we talked when he called to play. Like, you know what I mean? But um, what made me respect him was how hard he went. Like he was always yeah. the first dude. The first dude. I, he was the first dude that came in the gym in the morning. He he done did. He done got stretched, lift, shot, got stretched again, and we just walking in, getting ready for practice. So now when practice come, it's like he chilling in practice. I'm like, why you ain't practice? But he done worked out harder than what we about to do in practice. 
beforehand. Now it's just basically like a teaching tool for everybody, for him when we start practice. And he used to do that shit so effort, like with no effort. So I used to just always watch him, always watch him to where, you know, I had to do nothing but respect that. And as soon as I started doing that, we just started clicking unknowingly. And I remember that next year we made it to the playoffs um, because we we had a tricky season er earlier that season. Um, The following season, I think we started off like six and 12. He was about to get traded. I was about to get traded. They was about to blow up the whole thing again. And I remember me and Cal just came together like, look, you already got a deal to get traded in a couple of days. They just waiting on some 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 shit to get final. And I had asked for a trade. And we was like, well, fuck it. We got a week left. And that week, we 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 played like, like we was on the West Coast road trip. We left out of it like four or five. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, we we rolling. I'm talking about we beat some teams. We beat the Lakers. We we wouldn't go to state one. We we beat some teams and went back home to where it was like, fuck it. Let's just let's just let's go for broke. We hooped that 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 season. I made the all-star team and we made it to the playoff play Brooklyn. This one Brooklyn had everybody. Mm-hmm. All the old guys, KG, Paul Pierce, Joe Johnson. And we went seven games with them. My first time to the playoffs, most of us first time to the playoffs, and we just, we went out. And I just remember how Cal played. I remember he outplayed Darren Williams. He, we was we was going at it with with Joe, um, Paul, KG, like, and we held our own and lost game seven by, by a point. Mm. And from that moment in the playoff, I, I had nothing but respect for him because every day he laid it out there. He didn't care about if he bust his jaw open, bust his lip. He the first one to get up off the floor and, and keep pushing. So and I think from there, that's what that just would would like took off with our friendship and everything. That's crazy how it started. I ain't never heard that story. That's what's up. Yeah. So that was 2014. Yeah. You guys lose to yeah. uh to, to Brooklyn in a seven game series. 2015, you guys lose to Washington. Two experiences, like you said, you took someone to game seven, then you get swept mm-hmm. the following year. Swept. You come into yeah. 16, and you guys beat Indiana in seven, beat Miami mm-hmm. in seven. Miami seven. Now you guys are on the East in the Eastern Conference Finals against LeBron James. Paint that picture mm-hmm. for me. So going into that, um, it was tough because we, we was putting ourselves in tricky situations, these series, um, going game seven, game seven being mentally exhausted, then going play against Cleveland. Um, I think we got killed first two games in Cleveland. And, you know, turning on ESPN, seeing everything on social media, basically saying, like, we we didn't have no chance um, killing us, killing me and Cal. And, you know, it was another conversation me and Cal just said in half. It was like, look, we got to go. We got to go for broke, man. Like, we just got to go out there and lay it out. You know, we go back home. We win two games in a row. Um, then eventually we 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 fell, we fell to them in, in six. But, you know, it, it was a big test for us because we was under so much in playing against Brown. You know, it was, it, it was tough. You know, um, the experience wasn't there. We didn't really understand what it really took to kind of get over that hump. You know, we was fighting amongst ourselves, trying to figure it out. But um, to get what we got – being counted out beginning of the season, middle of the season, playoffs, you know, we 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 did a lot. What was battling LeBron on that stage like? Man, it was it was such a challenge because that was the first time in in a in a moment like that of playing against a player that that was locked in like like he was a coach. Like he was <laughs> Like, like, you know, it, it was the first time, like, being in a series where, you know, um, we call in a play and when our teammates came in the game and he forgets the play we we was running and Brian tell him what to do on our play. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know, it's like small shit like that. Ah, you be like, level. Man. You know that's what I mean? Like it, 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 it just shows, yeah. It, it just it just shows you like, yo, dude is on a different level that mm-hmm. none of us haven't been to or understand in the moment when it comes down to this. And it was it was it was 
it was crazy because it was like, you know, if everybody not on one accord and everybody don't know what to do, exactly. you have a leader that that been in the moments that 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 knows what it takes. You know, you're gonna fall behind the a ball just off just off that mental that mental side of the game. And you know, looking back at that moment, she it shows you like why it's so tough to beat this motherfucker in them in them situations. It's hard to mm-hmm. win. Beat this, beat them four games, like. And you telling me we're not on the same page where you can't remember a play, but this motherfucker don't play? Yeah, we we we, we was we was in it in for it. Mm-hmm. So he would kind of be a roadblock for the next two years too. Seventeen and eighteen, yeah. you play them in the second round. He knocks you guys out. What was it like mm-hmm. knowing that you guys were a good team, but just not that next level? Because he was going to the finals every year, and he obviously was the mm-hmm. measuring stick. What was that like between you and Kyle and your team at that time? It was it was frustrating because every every time we got knocked out, we was trying to figure it out. We was just trying to figure out like our whole mindset when it came to the playoffs from that point on was, yo, we got to get past one person. Like we just got to get past one person, man. Like that really was the 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 motive. How can we do that? What we need to to be able to do that? And we just tried a whole bunch of stuff. And every time we ran into him, I think. In some ways, we kind of like panic, try to overdo it, try to overthink it instead of like, you know, making it simple for ourselves. And, you know, we just kept finding ourselves in that same position, not being able to get over the hump. Mm. So obviously trades are part of the business, um, what they say. But obviously you being someone who was, you know, planted in in, in the roots of uh, of Toronto, so to speak, um, and then you get traded for Kawhi Leonard. What was it like? Were surprised? I've heard you speak on it a couple of times, but I like you know our guests to hear like what was your thought when you first like yo you're really getting traded right now, and then you hear you're getting traded for Kawhi Leonard. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when we lost that that last series. I knew something was going to happen. Um, whether you know fire the coach, trade me or Cal, I just knew something was going to happen. And we we me and Cal talked about it every day. Like man, something was going to happen. Something was going to happen. Um, so a couple of weeks go by after we lost, um, then Bron, Bron decides to go to LA. So we like, well, shit, this is the only person mm-hmm. we ain't lost to. Maybe we have one more chance at this thing. You know what I mean? Like, and that kind of like ease, that kind of like eased our, our mind for a second because we like, man, it's only one motherfucker that we, that we haven't been able to get past. Like, fuck it. We about to at least run it back one more time and, and, and give it a shot. Um, and that was our mindset until, you know, I, I kept hearing a few things, hearing a few things. So when it happened, um, when I got the call being traded, um, it was, I was like at a movie premiere or something. I remember I left. I got the call and I, I was in the car. I got out the car. So I walked down the street. <laughs> and it, it, it just, it, it tripped me out because it's like, you know, at that time, you know, I was nine years in, fully dedicated, and I was just trying to, you know, I wanted to get one more shot at it, especially with Bron being gone, you know, and not to get the opportunity. I think that's what hurt the most instead of getting traded because, you know, I had in my mind that, you know, this shit ain't going to last forever, you know, in the sense of like, you know, something going to happen if, if, if we don't get to the finals or compete for a championship, you know what I mean? Um, so for me, just not getting that opportunity hurt hurt the worst. So you getting traded for Kawhi the year LeBron leaves, leaving the team that you were drafted by nine years with, leaving your best friend, seeing Kawhi go over there and them triple bounce their way into the finals, the Warriors mm-hmm. drop like flies, and you see your team that you were just traded from that you – put your blood, sweat, and tears to it, win a championship. How difficult mm-hmm. was that to kind of digest and kind of understand? Man, it, it was tough from the standpoint of, you know, all you, it, it started to seem like I was the problem. You know, that was the most frustrating part was like people looking at it. Oh, they doing it as soon as he, as soon as he leave. Oh, See, maybe he was a problem the whole time. That was the most frustrating part for me, you know, and, and that was the part that sucked and, and, and hurt it the most for me because it's like, man, 
any any real motherfuckers like, look, we can get past one person. You telling yeah. me with, with, with <laughs> no with, the the, with, pro, the the problem went to L A. <laughs> That's what the happened. Kang, right. The Kang was the problem. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, you 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 telling me that? Come on, you know what I mean? But that was the part that was more frustrating. That you know the the common minded person who just watch and see sees the game or sees them go all the way and look at it like, see, yeah, all we had to do was get more out of here and and you know they go all the way. <laughs> You know what I mean? Crazy, I think that was right. the frustrating part that every single day it used to make me want to lash out like and say something, but I'm like, nah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just eat it. I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna just deal with it. I'm gonna deal with it because at the same time, all my partners still there. Um, people yeah. that basically raised me still work in that organization that I still talk to to this day. Um, so every single guy, I, I think I said it over and over. Every single guy. When they struggled in a series or had a bad game, I was the first one to text them, tell them, mm. you know, hold your head, try this, do this, do this. When they won, I was the first person to text every last person that I played with on that team. Told them congratulations, FaceTime on that same night. So it was never no animosity towards them. It was just more so like the perception of, of the whole thing was more frustrating than anything. What a real one would do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now in San Antonio. How does it? How has it been building a relationship with Pop? I know with me, I needed Pop coming until the beginning of my career because I, I, he taught me how to be a professional. He taught me how to be a man, mm-hmm. and he taught me how to prepare myself to earn my minutes and and, and to stay on the court. Uh, a lot of mm-hmm. different things with me, but um, how was it building a relationship with Pop, the, one of the greats? I mean, it was, it was, I think it was easy um, for me, you know, coming in being an established player, you know, um, listen. You know, I um, I never had no issues or anything. I was always all always all ears. So coming in, you know, just being able to build, you know, more than anybody stack when he say, let's break bread together on them fucking dinners and all that. You sit and talk to him and, and, and yes, have, them convers- have them conversations and, you know, you know, pick each other's brain. You know, it was it was it was a great, simple tra- transition, you know, I'm. I remember my first probably like 20 games, Pop always used to call me right after the game before I even got home and, you know, you know, give me certain, you know, um, if, advice that I needed, you know, um, take it easy, take it slow. Don't worry about this, this, this. And, and it kind of made my transition real, real smooth and easy um, mm-hmm. for me. So it was great, you know, um, for the most part. Other he gives he gives a different dynamic as a coach. You know, you know more than anybody stack as far as like, you know, putting life in perspective, not just basketball. Right. You know, um, now for me, I think that's that's a dope quality to be able to go to work and and have some days to really break down. That you know, we fucking play basketball for a living. We get paid a lot of money to play basketball, but you know, this is the re- reality of life that's going on. You know, um, yeah, and, right. And really put things in perspective. So for me, that that's been a dope part to be able to have a conversation and talk with him about. Yeah, he it was a, it was a fine line. Some things that he made me understand, like it's mm-hmm. it, it's it's cool it's cool to to come into this game and be a basketball player and do all this, but at the same time, everything else you got to earn. Yeah. There's nothing's gonna be given to you. Yeah, you're a basketball mm-hmm. player, you have the great life, but in real life, you have to earn it, and that's what I always got from Pop. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you in the NBA, mm-hmm. I love you. I'm gonna treat you like a son. I want you part of this organization, but in real life, you have to earn everything. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's dope. And, and he you always, are, and you know, you know, it's crazy. My bad, Matt, to cut you no, off. You go ahead. It's, go ahead. Uh, it's always funny speaking about Pop and all that. I remember Pop. They told me a story about when y'all was playing in Golden State. Y'all had just gotten an argument or some happened um, about some, and y'all before the game he played your music video in the locker room and like <laughs> in front of everybody <laughs> and like I forgot how he told the story when he said y'all had just got into it or some and the the make light of the whole situation when y'all came in the locker room for the game he played he played one of your rap videos <laughs> that, hey, that, hey, hey that's hey, hey, he, hey you know we all we all sat down for film I remember that so he didn't play he didn't play me uh, he pulled me out the game the last game I was mad so I came you know me Matt I show up to shoot around and practice the next day attitude don't want to be there you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying but I was starting at the I was starting at the time and so I come in the locker room I ain't say nothing to him all day you know Tim was trying to get me out of it. Man, we sit down, man. You know, I got the mug on. 
video come on. I'm thinking we finna get ready to prep for the game. It's one of my rap. I was one of my rap videos. Everybody busts out laughing, dog. <laughs> but but he knew what he knew what he was doing because it got it's me good. out of it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It got yeah. everybody. Yeah. And he's a genius at that shit. Man. He's a, yes, yes. That's so that's that's my point to speak on pop on how fucking much of a genius he is. Yes. So all of a sudden now, you know what I mean? Now you done forgot the whole situation. You know what I mean? Like, yep. That's what's up. That's that shit is dope. That was mind game. That's a, that's what Phil Jackson was great. That was one thing I appreciate about yeah. him, the way he moved and knew how to push people's buttons to get the best out yeah. of them. You guys are in a tough Western Conference with a good mix of vets and young players. Obviously, you know, rumors swirl in the offseason. Um, you hear it just like we hear it. Um, but when you hear you possibly be to the Lakers, like being someone who grew up in L.A., who was a, you know, Kobe was, quote unquote, your MJ. I know you're a spur, but growing up, did you ever pitch yourself in that purple and gold? No of question. Course. No question. Yeah, no, <laughs> of I, course. I'll be, I'll be, you did it too, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I was, yeah. I was, a, you know, I was, I was with his dad. I was a, a Showtime. That's where I grew up at. So I, I it was mm-hmm. always a dream of mine to put the purple and gold yeah, on. You kind of, you, you kind of remind me of a light skinned Michael Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> He's stupid as hell. <laughs> the high socks and the baby shorts. <laughs> but, hey, but hey, but you said light skin because you and Cooper about two fifteen oh, in yeah? the AM. Y'all the same color. <laughs> facts, facts. Go ahead, go ahead, Devon. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> Without a doubt, you know what I mean. You always had them dreams of doing it. You know what I mean, and and. For me, it's, it's, look, I, I've learned being in the league so long to take, like, it's, it's, you always want to be wanted. You know what I mean? So when you see things about teams wanting you, you know, it, you, you can't feel a certain type of way. You better feel good about it because it's, it's some motherfuckers that not want it. That, that, that's, that's, you know, you nice. know, you don't want to, you don't want to be that person, you know, so to be right. wanted by, by, by a championship team that just, came off a championship, you know, to see that, you know, how how could you not feel some type of way? Especially yeah. me, me being from LA, it's like, damn, mm-hmm. you know, my, my hometown team want me. They just what? came off a championship. They want me. You know what I mean? So it definitely um it's crazy to be able to see that, you know what I mean? But anybody know whatever jersey I got on, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay it out there on the line and represent it the best way I can. You always want to be in the wanted category. You don't want to be in the unwanted yeah. category. Stay in exactly. the wanted category. Trust me, I know. Where yeah. do you guys? Where, yeah. where do you guys? <laughs> where do you guys practice? Jack, what's the little area called that they practice in in San Antonio? What's the city called that the practice facilities in? Do you know? Uh, San Antonio. This is San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Oh uh, San- no! It start with an H. It start with an H. Uh, I don't know the list yet. I forgot it's been a while. Anyway, <laughs> San Antonio or El Segundo down by the beach. <laughs> San Antonio, El Segundo down by the beach. But no, yeah. this uh, this interview is not going to Either way, you're going to get some real Mexican food. I'm talking about real Mexican food. Not that, <laughs> yeah. not that, tech, not, not that Tex-Mex shit. I'm talking yeah. about real <laughs> Mexican food. Yeah. Yeah. LA, LA and Texas. I mean, this interview is not going to drop uh, for a couple of weeks because obviously we teamed up with Complex and Complex land for this. So I'm just putting it out there. By the time this drops, hopefully you'll be a Laker. I'd like to see you in that uniform. You don't have to comment on it. That's just my yeah. personal opinion. I don't want to get you in trouble <laughs> anyway, but that's, that's what I'm putting out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go ahead, looks Jack. good to me, Matt. Just straight up. Uh, I can I, say it all I want. Yeah, it looks good to us. The 2020 Hall of Fame class, Kobe, KG, mm-hmm. Duncan. Talk mm-hmm. about that. Man, I, pff, name name another one that's 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 that got some great names you like can. that. You can. Right. Like that's that's shit, man. Like that man, that's one of that, that's one of those <laughs> ones that I, I, I wish I, I I could go to and, and be able to witness just all the greatness that's around, man. Like like you said, rest in peace, Kobe. I wish, I wish, I wish Bean was there to, you know, hear his, hear his speech, you know. But it's, fuck, I don't see, I don't see another class that 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 could top that with them guys and did, man. You you're talking about arguably one of the best shooting guards of all time, um, two of the best power forwards of all time. Come on, man, it's it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Can't beat that. Yeah. And uh, 
February 2018, um, outside of basketball, to me, you did one of the most important things you've ever done, yeah. probably without even knowing at the time, but you discussed mm-hmm. your battles with mental health. And it's been mm-hmm. something that in our community in particular to show weakness from a, from a child is is that it's weak. You don't do mm-hmm. it. You don't you don't complain. You don't do this. You don't do that. You tough it out. We're taught to tough it out. We're taught not to cry. We're taught to be tough. And you broke your silence. Uh, what made you break your silence uh, the way you did on Twitter? Um, I think like the week before All Star Weekend, we was on a road. We was on a road. And I hadn't seen my kids in, in, in a while, man. We was on the road. And I remember, I think we played like in Chicago or something. And I, I flew home for All-Star Weekend. So I get a couple of days before, you know, the, all the weekend festivities start. So um, in my mind, I'm thinking I'm going home to see my kids, not knowing like I'm, I'm a starter of, of the All-Star team in L.A., where I'm from. Everybody and their mama asking for something. Everybody oh, yeah. wants something. Everybody and mama think we about to hang out and kick it. Only thing on my mind is to go see my kids, spend time with them. And I remember getting home and it's like, as soon as I touch down, everybody and their mama just pulling at me, pulling at me, pulling at me, needing, needing something, wanting something, got something to say, this, that. And it's like, I just want to see my kids, man. Mm-hmm. Like putting a different type of pressure on me. And I, and, and, and I think I just had a, a build up of being fatigued from the season. Um, people just on my head and just the overwhelmness, uh, overwhelming of everything that, that was going on. I just, I remember laying down in the middle of the night, like three o'clock in the morning, like, man, I ain't got nobody to talk to, man. Fuck it. I go to Twitter. I tweet it. Man, I lay down, not knowing the next day we got uh, media, <laughs> not knowing the whole media going to be there and ask me questions about this tweet. And I remember waking up um, and everybody calling me like, man, you know what you just tweeted? What you mean this and that? Like it was a, it was, it was so much stuff to where it's like, damn. And it just put me in a place like, man, fuck it, man. I've been through so much in my life. I'm just about to express and, and say what's on my mind and what I've been dealing with because I've been internalizing so much stuff that I had never even dressed growing up in Compton from high school of things that mm-hmm. I've seen witness and been through. Um, things I went through in college, things I was going through at the time, like so much, so much pain and frustration and things that we get so great at just sweeping under the rug. It just got to a point to where it was just, it was just built up and I was, I lashed out, you know what I mean? And, and, and it turned out to be something that became a tool and, and, and something I could help other people with. Yeah. Well, that's what I always say. You know, sometimes when people say, why do you share stuff publicly? Because Mm -hmm. it it was just for what you said, it's tools for other people. You know what I mean? When they Mm -hmm. see someone on the level we've been to and accomplished what we've accomplished, knowing that we battle with the same kind of stuff um, that they Mm do makes us more relatable first and foremost, but then also encourages people, you know, and and, and, yeah. and it mm-hmm. brings a voice to what what has been voiceless in our community for so long. You know, obviously Kevin Love has spoke on it. Dak Prescott spoke on it. Uh, Paul George recently spoke on it um, about being in the bubble. Um, is this anything that you've talked to other people who have experienced it, not necessarily like paid, paid help, but other players or people who've gone through what you've uh, gone through with your depression? Yeah. And it's crazy because it's like I find myself having a conversation with with people that people would never think have something going on. And to be able to have that dialogue with people and you see the weight lift off their shoulders from just mm-hmm. feeling comfortable with another person that, you know, know they've been through something and can kind of, you know, is you kind of feel different. You know, what I mean, I always tell people it's like, you know, why why do we listen to music? Our music changed every single day because we probably could relate to it and make us feel better. We we get someone else story of what they got going on in their life, what makes us feel better because it don't make us feel alone. You know what I mean? It's the same way mm-hmm. with people, but so many people just scared to share that story and 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 want to sit in front of another person because they scared to being judged or this and that. And you know, for me, I just got to a point where it's like, can't can't nobody come at me or degrade me for, for, for my morals or what type of man I've been through because what type of man I am because I know what I've been through. I know what I made it through. I know where I'm at in my life now. So, um, you know, just giving somebody else those words will, will, will definitely do a lot. 
No, that's dope. We definitely commend you for your braveness because, like you said, it's yep. it's tough. A lot of people don't have the courage to yeah. speak up on it, and 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 you putting it out there, like you said, we were able to use it as a vehicle to help others, which is dope, man. So. Mm-hmm. Good work with that. Uh, recently, yep, yep. Uh, PJ Tucker claims to be, I don't know if it's self-proclaimed <laughs> or everyone, but he claims to have the most shoes. And I saw that you almost, or did you outdo him? I mean, you got a gang of shoes. Talk nah, to us about your shoe he, collection. So PJ is my man. I'm, I, we played together for a year. Um, but, you know, PJ shows off his shoes. I love him to death. But when it comes to them shoes, I've always been a modest person. Like, you know, I, I play the black background with everything I do. I just sit back and watch everything. But it was just one day I was in a good mood. I was like, man, Tuck keep posting the shoes. Don't make me, like, kill off your shoe collection. <laughs> Don't make like, me. I, 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 like, yeah, you know what I mean? It was just one of those moments, like... I know, like, I know who the I know who the Kobe God is, man. Yeah, yeah. He, he, oh yeah, the, come uh, on. Demar, Demar done got about four, five DMs for me asking for shoes. So yeah, he did. It's nobody, it's nobody by far I seen with the cleanest Kobe's. He's definitely no, a Kobe Beans, God. No, nah, when it comes when it comes to Kobe's, by far not one person in this NBA. No, I used to tell I used I used to tell Bean that I said you're the only person who got more shoes got you got more <laughs> your shoes than me like that's it. Like, I used to tell him all the time. I used to I used to get shoes from him, everything ever since I was in the 12th grade in college. Like man, I need those. Like so, mm-hmm. um, that 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 been my thing. So you know it was it was one of those moments with with PJ. Like you know I love people. I know people love all them shoe fanatic heads um, out there. Love. Shoes, so it was just one of those things where I was just like, I'm a, um, I'm a fuck with Tuck and just, just, just make some fun of him and shit. Nah, you got, you got, you got some shoes. You definitely could compete. I tell you this, I tell yeah. you that. So, uh, how many do you think you have, and why? You know, every everybody's a lot of people that say they should be sneakerhead king. You know, you got DJ Khaled, yeah. you got PJ Tucker, you got a lot yeah. of people. So, how many do you think you have, and why should you wear the crown? I give you the crown for Kobe, um, but why should you think you should be the sneakerhead crown? Um, one, I don't show all my shoes. Two, it's been Ooh, it's been okay. A lot of people show off their shoes and, and want to flex like they got. It's cool. You could, I could, anybody could pull out four pair of exclusives and be like, "Look, I got them all." But let's right. see the whole. Let's see the whole thing. The whole shit. <laughs> let's see the whole thing. <laughs> let's see the. You know what I mean? Not just not just your closet, because I got a couple yeah. closets and a couple houses that's full of like some <laughs> some ones. And I yeah, got some storages, yeah. got some storages, and I got like, you know what I mean? It becomes a whole different type of game. Y'all wanna play the shoe game. Like, <laughs> nah, y'all don't, y'all don't want this, y'all don't, y'all don't want this they smoke want when problems. it comes come to it. Nah, man. Yeah. Tell you, that's funny. Man, that's funny. Like, so obviously, talking about Cobes. Uh, I heard a story about early on in your career. You wore them. Obviously, you've been wearing them since the twelfth grade. When you played against Kobe, did you wear his shoes or did you wear a different shoe? So, so early on, I remember. I remember who said something to me. Uh, I want to. I want to. I'm going I'm to ask Vince if you remember this. I remember Vince. We was playing against Vince. I want to say was he playing in Phoenix or something? Vince was like, "When you play against Kobe, do you wear shoes?" I'm like, "No, I, I haven't yet." I'm like, why? Like nah, you you don't supposed to wear my your opponent opponent shoe or blah blah blah. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so next time I played code, I wore some Jordans. It was the wrong fucking thing I should have did. As soon as I walked <laughs> on the court, as soon as I walked on the court, Cole was like, "Oh, that's what we doing, motherfucker." And didn't say nothing to me the rest of the game. Right? Hey, hey, you just <laughs> sounded so much like him right there when he said that. That's what we do, motherfucker. Yeah, you sounded just like Kobe right there, dude. That's crazy as hell. He was, he was he was off you, huh? He was off. Did oh, he man, play he bust your ass too? Shit. What man? <laughs> and that game, I swear to God, you can find a game too, bro. I remember we, he hit the game when it shot in Toronto, bro. I remember I had hit. One of somebody hit a shot, put us up like one. This they called a timeout in front of our bench. This motherfucker walked past our bench while we was in the huddle. Said you left me too much time. Mm. Came out, hit the fucking game winner, right? Mm. So I was like, man. So after the game, talked to him. He was like, 
like, damn, man, my bad, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we went in the whole conversation. That's kind of like when the whole, like, the team mama thing started coming up uh, about, you know what I mean? Of like, all right, cool, look, look, we're going to start this, this this whole mama thing off. You're going to be the one that that kind of kicks it off with the shoes That's and everything. Dope. Hell and then, yeah. You know, I, just, I just ran off with it. That's what's up. That's a that's a crazy ass story. That's what's up. Yeah, that's I don't think, doing, yeah, I, don't think I never yeah. told that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, nah, but right. hey, 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 I swear to God that was him when you said it, because he didn't said that plenty yeah. of times. That shit was crazy. Man. This so that's crazy, that's man. how that's how Team Mamba started? Yeah, it was like that conversation from that to where it was like, look, look, we just gonna do it from here. You 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 the main option when it comes to the, to this. And from then I had to start rocking them. Um, all exclusive because I, I want to say like that next year he started, you know, he had the knee injury, had the shoulder injury. He started, you know, getting hurt his last couple of years to to be the first one to wear the shoes. So I started to be the first one to debut all the shoes um, and doing them in our colorway. And it just kind of took off from there. Mm, that was, that's dope. dope as hell. What's your relationship like with Drake? Seeing dude, you was in Toronto for nine years. He's synonymous with the culture. He's worked his way to team ambassador, OVO practice facility. You know what I mean? It's just, mm-hmm. it's just all there. What's your relationship like with him? Man, that's that's, 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 that's my dog. And I, in all honesty, besides who he is and anything, that's really, that's really one of my partners, one of my friends. I call him, ask for anything, hit him, whatever I need. You know what I mean? That's really, really one of my partners. Great dude, man. Been the same since day one. My, my first, you know, my, my rookie year was, you know, the start of, of his career, you know. So to come up and have that relationship with him through through the whole process is 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 definitely been been one of a kind, you know, to see where he at now. And, you know, um he been to the house, go to his house, you know, um, you know, my dog, man, good dude. That's what's have up. Have you have you have you have you been to the city, Drake? That new house he got? Uh, no, nah, I was supposed to go when we played in Toronto, but he 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 didn't get in time, get um get back in town in time. Um, man, um this past year, but I, I definitely want to see it. It's crazy. That thing yeah, look crazy, that shit man. Look insane. Man, that shit look, look insane. crazy, man. <laughs> All right, last us. Uh, we're in the home stretch right here. Uh, three artists you're currently listening to. Three. Ooh, that's a good one. It could be old, no, anybody. Whoever, yeah, whoever you listening to right now, three of them. Uh, man, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. You know what's crazy? I've been listening um, King Von, rest in peace. Um, yeah, rest in peace, King Von. Rest in peace, Mo3, uh, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. rest in peace, Mo3. Um, been on King Von lately. Uh, my dog, Problem. I'm partner for Conte. Been listening to him. Um, he, got some, he got some new music coming? Yeah, 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 yeah. Got some. He new need to put one. some he new got, music got, out. Yeah, yeah. He mm-hmm. got, he got he just dropped some new new um new one cushion coffee not too couple couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. Okay. Um. Who else? And Nip. Um. I keep it simple, man. Nip. Can't rest in peace, Nip. Man. Yeah. Always. Mm. Mm. You already know. If you made a soundtrack of your life, three songs you would have in rotation. Ooh. Tupac, so many, uh, so many tears. Mm. Oh yeah, hot. classic. Um, um, um. Ooh, that's a good one. That one for sure. Um, oh damn. Ooh, that's a good one. Man. You got me. Mm. My man, look at my playlist. That's a good one. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, 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 we got um, you. We got him now, man. We got him now, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause I don't want to. I don't want to just say anything. Right, right. Uh, Shed so many tears uh, is a good start, though. By yeah, I got, I got, a, I got, yeah, I got. I got. He set the bar high with that. That's um, a hell of a start. Um, Kendrick Element. Mm. Got to go with Kendrick okay. Element. That's um, that's the deep. That's the deep one. Yeah. Um. We need some new Kendrick music too. Oh, it's it's coming. Um, oh, that's a good one. Uh, Tupac Kendrick. Say some many tears, Kendrick Lamar, mm-hmm. Element. Yeah, some Drake, some Nip. Who else? Nip. Um, Nip's uh, stuck in the grind. 
Oh, yo. Man, stuck in yeah. the grind. I played that yeah. song stuck like 10 I, I played that song like 10 times today driving back from my workout. Just See? kept playing. Yeah. It. See? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yep. a good call. Stuck I like that. Grind. I'm stuck in the grind. Yeah. I like that. Um, toughest player you've ever had to guard? Um Kevin Martin. Mm. Wow, that was a sneaky one right there. Yeah, very. People don't forget that mother. You can't nah. touch him. Kevin Martin. Can't touch yeah, him. and he and he was someone who learned <laughs> he learned how to get that running flop shit off too. He started doing yeah. it before James he was, was the doing first, it. He, anybody before Lou Will. Yeah. Uh, he's Man. the first. He was anybody. a pro with that shit. You, you Kevin cannot, Martin was you nice. Touch him. He he used to be the first one to easily go shoot 14, 16 free throws. Yeah. He was, but Kevin, because, but Kevin Martin, he would he would fool you though, because not only was yeah. he good with getting fouls, but he didn't guard you, so you no, would think that no, yeah. he let me score this easy. Should I let him yeah. score this easy? Right, that, that's, <laughs> that's how I was thinking. He's stupid. <laughs> that yeah. wasn't guarding nobody. He wasn't guarding nobody, dog. Come on now, <laughs> nah. he wasn't guarding I nobody. Say, I, I say yeah, him. Nice. I know. I know that was a. I, I know that was a random one, but it was him and for sure D Wade. Yeah, flash. Yeah. D, D Wade early on when he was flash. Yeah. He, Remember he when you used to have you, you did a whole scout report? Don't let him cross back over and reject the screen. You got to make him yeah, go over the screen. Like it. either he way, still do it. Either yeah. way, you was Man, in trouble. You knew that shit was coming, and he's still doing it. Set yep. you up and cross yep. you right back to the baseline every time. <clears throat> top five sneakers of all time. We know you like the Kobe's, you know, but what's the top five sneakers of all time? Top five. You got to go with the Jordan ones. Um, okay. Um, gotta go with the um, Jordan ones, Jordan fives, Jordan threes. Yes, you gotta sir. put some um, chuck. You gotta put some chucks in there. Don't play with yourself. Definitely put some chucks. Um, and you gotta go with pennies. You gotta put the phone pops Ooh. in there. Y'all so Ooh. West Coast. Gotta I put did, the yeah, chucks yeah. in there. Got Come it. on, man. You already know. That shit made me laugh, though, because I remember when I first went out to Philly, my second year, I got traded with C-Webb. I was out in Philly in in February with Chuck Stone, like, walking on that street. That's like walking with socks mm-hmm. on. Like, yeah, it was cold yeah. as a motherfucker out there, bro. Straight up. like bricks. Man, what? I didn't have no cold or nothing. That shit hit home earlier when you said, bro, I went. I had to deal with the cold. Like, I had never... I was what, 22 maybe, 23? Mm-hmm. Never been in, a, like, probably been in snow twice. I was living in Philly, bro. Mm-hmm. If I didn't get to just blow dope the whole time, I might have died out there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, five dinner guests, dead or alive? Five dinner guests? Um, Hove. Mm hmm. Uh, Denzel. You said Denzel? Denzel Washington. Hove, Denzel Washington. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Nice. Uh, um, Hope Denzel Muhammad Ali. Uh, um, Cold. Um, yeah. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Ooh, Mike Tyson. I like that one. Yeah. I like that. Last question, bro. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this okay, now when we ask you this question, your answer, you have to have that you have to help us with this answer, okay? Uh so think of your answer. You gotta think of your answer. Uh, who do you want who do you want us to have on the show? I'm gonna interrupt on this one. Let me interrupt on this one. Since you said someone earlier that you're very close and personal friends with you, call and ask him for anything. We need Drake on our show, bro, and we're gonna put it on Boom, your show. I was gonna say that to too, brothers. Go. Hey, we're brothers. I was gonna say that too. We're happy and we're singing and we're colored. Cause man, Matt, I was thinking the same thing you was thinking. Matt, yeah. so way to go, bro. We tell through there the camera, go. bro. It's all on you. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Y'all yeah, definitely should. He appreciate yeah. you. Hell yeah, tell the boy, tell the boy, and tell we Nico Stack Five. Say, come on, man, we need y'all on the show, I, man. That, that should be an easy call. I'm, I, he, yeah, it started yeah. here. We're gonna manifest it. He's gonna be on the show. Straight yes, up, sir. He's gonna Straight be up, sir. Appreciate yeah. you, bro. Man, hey, Demar, we appreciate your time, man. Good luck um, in this off season. Like I said, I got my fingers crossed, and when this comes out, you'll be uh, in LA. Uh, but anyway, man, <laughs> best to you and the family. Good luck yeah. the rest of the way, man. We appreciate your time. 
Nah, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Much hey, that's a wrap. Bro. That's a yeah, wrap. Love. Another episode with DeMar DeRozan. You can find us on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. TV taught me how to dream.